So welcome to this video, which is going to be on a Benina Activa 140. Now my mum's asked me to have a look at this because it gave off the classic electrical burning smell and stopped working. So what I have got is I've got the manual on it. So at the least I should be able to do a teardown video and show basically what's going on inside. Um, be nice if I could mend it. Did do a bit of electronics at school, um, but I'm not holding any hopes for that. But we'll see what happens. So here we bring in the Bernina Activa 140. Now, ironically, the delivery date on this was actually July the year 2000. So we're talking almost exactly 20 years old. So we'll plug this in. I'm not sure what quite what to expect. Um, whether we still have a smell of burning or something, I'm not sure about. Or whether the fuse is blown now. But anyway, we'll plug it in and see what happens. Absolutely nothing. Completely dead. wonder if the fuse has gone in the plug or something. Okay, we're going to check the fuse and see if that's gone. Here's a bit of a spoiler alert. Because in this video we go from this to this. So let's check the fuse first, as that's the most logical place to start. So we just put the multimeter onto a continuity test, quickly check the leads, and the meter was working, and the fuse is okay. So it's not the fuse in the plug. Let's just try a separate power supply with a separate lead, just to rule out the original power cord from being faulty. So we can confirm we've definitely got power there, yep. So let's plug this in and try it again. No, still dead. Okay, the plug fuse was okay. There should be an internal fuse as well that we need checking. So at the back of the Benina is a cover called the Alprint cover, and that's held on with a Torx 20. Please be aware that opening your sewing machine should only be done by a competent person qualified to undertake such work. It only takes between 100 milliamps, which is 0.1 amp, to 4 amps to cause certain ventricular fibrillation and death. With that warning out of the way, we're now going to proceed to remove the back cover, which will have the main power supply circuit board behind it. So as we open this door, we have to be very careful. There are four cables connected, and they are quite thin and delicate. And there's the cables, and we'll have a look at that now. So this is the Alprint circuit board, and there you can see a 4 amp fuse and a 3 amp fuse. We've also got the connector for the main motor, which is 30 volt DC, the sewing light connector, which is 12 volt 5 watts, the control signal for the main motor in blue, and the AS Print power supply in yellow. So if we now disconnect those, so that's the connector for the main motor, Pop that one off. Might need a little screwdriver there to help. And these ones just pull out. So the blue one is the control for the motor. This next one out was the power supply for the AS print. And lastly, the two wire was for the sewing light. So to remove the printed circuit board or PCB from the cover, it's a smaller Torx 10. And there's just one little screw there. We we'll pop that out. I'm only doing this purely to see the reverse of the circuit board to see if there's any signs of burning. And that looks all nice and clean. So I don't think the smell was coming from this circuit board. So anyway, so we can get on now and we'll test those two fuses, which is a 4 amp and a 3 amp. Testing the 4 amp and 3 amp fuses. So 
So we'll start with the secondary fuse, which is 3 amps, and that's fine. That's the one I would expect to have blown. And this is then the primary fuse, which is the 4 amp one. This one looks okay. And it is. We've got continuity there. Okay. So the problem is not where I thought it was. So I'd have a quick look under the magnifier, just in case that shows something up. But everything looks okay. So I'm a little bit puzzled at this point. So I think we'll have to go deeper into the machine. So I'll pop this circuit board back onto the cover and pop that to one side and we'll continue with the disassembly. Removing the top cover. So there's a little photo of that top cover and it's held on with two Torx 20 screws. So having changed the bit to a Torx 20, we can now pop these two Torx screws out and then the top should just lift off. You might need to lift the handle up there. Okay, so that's the top off and we can see a few wires there. Now the head cover and that's held on with one Torx 20. And here you'll be able to see the bulb and that bulb is a 5 watt bulb. And there it is there, highlighted in red. Just remove this bottom accessory tray. To remove the back panel, we need to carefully pull the balance button out. So swing the sewing machine around now, there's the balance button. And with a pair of pliers, carefully and firmly pull it out. Like so. So at this point you do need to note which wires come through which holes before you pull this cover off. Now this cover should come off without any effort. Just be careful of those cables. You don't want to pull them or damage them in any way. So there's the cover off now. We can start to see the motor and the drive belt. And I'll highlight those in red and the cooling fan in blue. Might be wise to familiarise ourselves with where those cables go on the AS print circuit board. So the one with the blue end goes to that point. The one with the white end goes there. And this little one with two wires feeds itself around the same machine to the head. And that one's for the little 5 watt bulb. So now to disconnect some of these connectors. We'll start with the first one, which is the bobbin winder motor. And then the black one is the position indicator. The blue one goes to the other side, which is the control signals for the motor. And then on this side we have the power supply, which is yellow. These two are very similar. So the next one will be the stepper motor for the stitch width. So we're just going to pop this out a little bit further. And there you can see it going to the top motor, which is the stitch width motor. And then the last one, which is blue, is the stepping motor for the stitch length, which you can see is a bit further down in the chassis of the sewing machine. And what I'll do is I'll also include a labelled photo of this circuit board now. So here is that photograph and that shows where all the cables are. I've included a cutaway there so you can actually see the colour of the individual plugs that go in along the top. And so that's the AS print front panel circuit board. So now to removing the free arm cover and access is via the base where there's a little screw. 
So this is the one side showing it, and that's the other side. OK, so if we turn the banana onto its side, there's a little plastic cover there. We just need to pop that through, like so. And that gives us access to the hidden screw. So now if we use our Torx 20, just pop that through and whiz it out. Now before you can pull it off, you do need to just pop the door off like so. And then that free arm cover should just slide off like that. Now to remove the base plate and cover, you'll need a Torx 10 and 30 for that. And here's a photo showing those four outer screws and the three inner Torx 30 screws. And also note the level adjusting foot in the bottom right hand corner. So we're going to just pop these four little screws out. These are Torx 10 and there's one in each corner. You could actually do this part after removing the three Torx 30 screws. There might actually be some logic in doing it the other way around. But anyway, we've loosened the plastic base now and now using a Torx 30, these are a lot harder to remove. You do need a little bit of torque. So there's three of those. And then that removes the base entirely from the sewing machine body. And the last one. Struggling there. Quite long screws as well. And as you can see, the plastic base is already loose now because we did that first, like so. Now to look over the bare chassis with some photographs for more detail. So there we are, there is the bare chassis of the Benina. I'm not going to start fiddling any further because you definitely need experience when you start tinkering inside that chassis. So anyway, so here's some photos. So this is a user front view with the main parts. Here's the user rear view. And there you can see the motor and the user right side end. And a closer view of that motor and the drive belt. And this is the user left side end. And lastly, the top front view. You can pause these for longer viewing. I will now start the process of putting everything back together. This will include a powered demonstration of the sewing machine running off a bench power supply. So I'll try and speed this part up a little bit. So there's our metal base. So we'll pop our plastic cover part on there. And then we're Bring the chassis over and there's the three studs in the bottom of the chassis. Drop those in. Carefully bring the sewing machine back onto the hand wheel. And then I'll pop the big T30 screws back in. There's three of those. And then I can I'll just check them again. They do need to be quite tight. And then the small T10 screws that hold the plastic in place, like so. So it can now stand up again. Now for a motor running check. So we'll connect this up to a bench power supply and see what happens. And we have got a running motor. So it's not the motor that's at fault definitely something else. That's running fine. So I thought I'd show in more detail how a sewing machine actually works. Because it's quite fascinating how all these mechanical parts that are all finely tuned interact with each other 
to actually complete a sewing cycle. Really quite impressive. Now when you see it going quite fast, they've got to be made quite well, haven't they? And a lot of moving parts in there. Very impressive. So a bit about Benina. In 1893 the Hemstetch sewing machine was invented that could sew 100 stitches a minute by Carl Frederick Gigoff. Seven years later, in 1900, a small factory had formed employing less than 100 people. Carl died in 1928 and the factory was taken over by his two sons, one of which left in 1947, but the other continued and his name was Fritz Gigoff. The name Benina came from the highest summit in the Eastern Alps, which is Piz Benina, and in 1932 the first machines left the factory under this name. In 1959, Fritz then handed the running of Benina to his daughter, and in 1979, she became president. And then in 1986, Benina introduced computer technology with the 1130 model. And later, in 1998, the Artista 180 would be made that was fully computerised. Then, in 2002, Microsoft Windows became integrated into the Artista 200. Now to replace the free arm cover. Okay, so putting the machine back together now. And so we're just going to pop the free arm cover back on. Bit of a fiddly job this one. Um, did find you needed to do a little bit of manipulating there to get that into position. And pop that little hidden screw back in, which is a Torx 20. And then put the little white plastic cover on, like so. And then we just need to put the machine on its side and pop the little bobbin door back on. And that's just a push on fit. Like so. So at this point my eye possibly just noticed a burnt tantalum capacitor. So while I was picking up this cover to put it back on the machine, I did notice what looked like a burnt tantalum capacitor. So I thought I better have a quick look at this and see if my eyes were deceiving me and no, nope, that looks pretty cooked. There's three of those along there and one of them's definitely burnt out. So this might be the reason the sewing machine's not working. But I don't actually keep tantalum capacitors in my little drawers. I've got electrolytic ones. Tantalum capacitors tend to be very voltage sensitive and have a lifespan of 20 years. And this sewing machine is ironically exactly 20 years old. Maybe just a coincidence. The advantage of them over electrolytic is the ability to withstand soldering as a surface mounted device. So we're going to have a go at soldering this and seeing if we can change that capacitor. So I calculate it's a 33 microfarad which this one is. So I pop soldering iron on and then we're going to have to carefully remove the old surface mount device Would be easier with the circuit board out of the housing. But I'm just going to hopefully succeed this way. So that's it off now. There's definitely a lot of debris on there. So we'll just brush all the debris off from where the old one exploded. And then we'll solder this new one on making sure we get the polarity correct, otherwise we'll have another little explosion. It's definitely tricky to solder while doing a video as well. Okay, let's see if this works. Now to replace the front control panel and pop the six connectors back on. Okay, so we can put this side cover back on now. 
So the first cable I'm connecting there with the blue end is for the stepping motor stitch length. So I'm now just going to try and get this housing on first. Now notice on the left hand side that piece of plastic there needs to go underneath so I probably should have slipped it in first at an angle. So it should be onto the wires next. Now the next one I'm going to do is the power supply which is the third connector from the end and now I'm doing the stepper motor for the stitch width which has got the black end, that's actually the second connector. Now we're going to work over to the fourth connector which is the control signals motor with the blue end then the position indicator which is a black end and lastly the bobbin winder motor with a white end. So I'm just going to pop those in, make sure they're all in tight. Like so. And that's job done. And just tuck that wire down there. There we are. Now to replace the back panel and push the four connector wires through the holes. OK, so we've got to pop the wires through. So note that the motor wire goes at the bottom hole and the three ribbon cables go at the top right. So that's the motor one in there. And then these three ribbon cables go in that hole at the top right. So make sure you're careful with those because they are quite fragile. Those are normally a solid core conductor. So if you bend it backwards and forwards too many times, there is a slight risk that you may actually snap the wire inside. So then you've just got to feel the case back on, being gentle. And that's looking okay. So, so we should be able to put the L print circuit board back in there now. So we can now put these ribbon cables back on. So make sure the wires are lined up correctly. So I'm going to start with the first one, which is the power supply for the AS print circuit board. Just push that in, that's the yellow connector. And now the control signals for the main motor, which is the blue one. And then this little one, which is the sewing light. Just push that in and then lastly the power for the main motor and that one clips underneath like so. So we should be able to now fold that carefully back into its housing and make sure you don't trap any wires in the door as you shut it. And then we can pop the screw back in which is a Torx 20. And then we just need to push the balance button back in. Now be careful with the balance button because there is a little black spigot on there that goes through the button. It's a little hole. So you don't want to break that little black piece of plastic off. So line it up carefully and then make sure as you push it in the black piece goes through the hole. Like so. So we can now swing the machine around and pop the top plate on. Now make sure that the wires going to that stepper motor aren't touching any of the moving parts inside. And you do need to push the arm of the bobbin spooler in to help with that plate going on. So the two screws go in and we snug those up using a Torx 20. There's one and two. So we can now spin it around to the end. Okay, so the head cover's on there. I keep checking that. I'm not quite sure if that's actually sat on properly, but it obviously must be. And then we put that in with a Torx 20. I think that's pretty much the same machine back together. Well, 
the moment of truth. To be honest, I was expecting nothing as before, or a loud pop as that new capacitor exploded. So here we go. Power's on. Switch it on. Oh, it came alive. The silence says it all. Total silence. As you can see, I was not expecting this to work. That's confidence for you. Okay, the needles set wrong from the last time it was used. So we've obviously got the wrong foot on there for the standards. It's asking for a number one foot there. I think that was a number four. And it's going up and down. See, I'm looking in total disbelief that this is working. It can't be working. It shouldn't be working. Let's try that. That's working as well. Can it really be mended? Well, it seems to be. Well, I didn't expect that. As you can see, I didn't expect that. Let's turn it off and turn it back on. Perhaps it won't come back on. Go on, turn it off. And turn it on. Still working. Well, well, well. Before giving the banana back to my mum, I feel I must straighten that twisted power cable as it can lead to the outer sheath wearing through and possibly risking an electric shock. So basically what I'll do is just use my little Stanley voice there. I'm putting the hot gun onto just a warm temperature. You definitely don't want it on hot or you could risk melting the insulation, which would be even more dangerous. So just warm it up enough to start to take the twist out of the cable and then what I do is tape it onto something like a flask and now that it's basically twist free to a degree I can just wrap it up around that and then if I warm that again just gently warm that up and that should relax all the insulation and then leave it to cool and then normally it should come off and be nice and flat, like so. Now I think that's a lot nicer than a twisted one. Here's some detailed photographs of the Benina, which you may wish to pause to view for longer, but they are here if you need a reference. So I'm only going to put these photos on for about three seconds because there is quite a lot of them. But they may prove quite important if you are going to be stripping down your banana and suddenly need to see some photos of the inside. So what you can do is obviously just pause them on a particular photo that you require and then study it in more detail. But there is quite a lot of information here and you never know especially if you're trying to repair it. So the Benina seems to be working quite nicely now. So this was quite a successful um, result from what basically was just going to be a tear down video. So hopefully this video proves useful to other people. Certainly was quite enjoyable to make. This video was sewing machine repaired of a Bernina Activa 140. 
and thank you for watching and hope this video helped you have a better insight of your Bonina. This video was filmed and edited by me, Mark Savage, in February 2021. I can be found on Instagram and Facebook under Coats and Gators.